Okay, so this one here is the 2011 paper two. So 2011 paper two for ordinary level. <coughs> now what we're going to get here is we're just looking at the first question. The first question. Just uh, quickly just shift this up back up here. Okay. Multiply. 320 grams by 5 and give your answers in kilograms. So first of all, just do what I ask you. 320 multiplied by 5. You're going to get 1,700 grams. Now, what you're going to notice about grams is, the word kilo means 1 kilogram is 1,000 grams. Okay. This would mean two kilograms is two thousand grams. So what this means is our answer has to be somewhere in between one and two kilograms because we only have one we have one thousand seven hundred grams. So basically, to convert grams into kilograms, you divide by a thousand. So divide one thousand seven hundred by a thousand, and you'll get one point seven kilograms. And that's what we're looking for, something in between one and two. Next one. John travelled by car from Tralee to Galway. He left Tralee at 9.45 and arrived in Galway at 12.57. How long, as in how much time did it take John to travel from Tralee to Galway? Give your answer in hours and minutes. So we have 12 hours 57 minutes minus 9 hours 45 minutes. And what we're going to get here is... 57 minutes minus 45 minutes is 12 minutes, and 12 minus 9 is 3. But we got to specify what that means. That means 3 hours and 12 minutes. Okay, next one. The distance from Tralee to Galway is 200 kilometers. Calculate John's average speed in kilometers per hour. Please remember, this is not given to you in your notes. It's the distance speed time triangle, the DST. Cover up whichever letter you're looking to get. We're looking for average speed. Cover up the S. And what you're left with is distance divided by time. So speed equals distance divided by time. Now, there's another problem with this. What we need you to do is the distance is 200 kilometers. Now, it wants in kilometers per hour. So if you were to write down 3.12, that's wrong. What you got to remember about minutes is there's not 100 minutes in an hour. There's only 60 minutes in an hour. So to get around this problem, what we need to do is the following. We'd like to write down 3 hours, and we have 12 minutes in 60. 3 hours and 12 minutes out of 60. Now divide 20, uh, 200 divided by 3 and 1260, that's okay. So 200 divided by 3... And 12 over 60. And what we'll get is 62.5 kilometers per hour. Now, if you're having problems finding this button here, what you do is you press, you look at above the, uh, above the fraction button, there's going to be a button that looks like this. And it's going to have three squares. So all you have to do is press the shift button and then press the fraction button and you should get what we need for this one here, okay? So if you're stuck. Next part. John estimated the cost, it cost 22 cents per kilometer to drive his car. How much did it cost him to drive his car from Tralee to Galway? So remember, it's 200 kilometers he drove in total. Each kilometer cost him 22 cents. 22 cents is 0.22. 200 multiplied by 0.22 And what's going to cost them is 44 euro. Now remember, we converted cent into euro by presenting it like this, okay? If you just multiplied it by 22, you would have got 200 multiplied by 22. And what that would have gave you would, would have been uh, 4,400 cent. And 4,400 cent, you'd have to convert that into euro by dividing by a, dividing by 100. And you would have got 44 euro as well. So there's two ways of doing it, okay?
Next way, we're going to do next is the shape and measurements of a field are shown in the diagram below, like so. And it wants you to find the length of A to B. Now to find the length of A to B, which is uh, this green arrow here, what we're going to have to do is we have to look at lines that go horizontally, as in go straight across. The 65 is one, and the 110 is the other. But what we need to realize is that we have to figure out how much bigger 110 is than 65 to figure out what the distance is. So it's going to be 110 minus 65. That's going to get me 45 meters. Okay, 45 meters here. Now while we're here, we might as well try to do the uh, this length here as well. Okay, to find out what that length there is, it's going to be... It's not part of this question, but we might as well do it now. It's going to be 55 meters. We can see 55 meters is the full thing, minus 35 meters. And what that's going to get me is 20 meters. So remember, this here is 20 meters, going from here to here. Okay, next thing. Calc find the perimeter of the field. What perimeter means is you're running around the full field. It's like a lap of the full field. So to calculate the perimeter, what we need to do is we need to add all these numbers together. So let's go for the first three numbers, 55, 65, and 20. So 55 plus 65 plus 20. I stopped after the 20. Now I have 45, 35, and 110. Plus 45, plus 35, plus 110. Okay, so let's figure this out. 40, 55 plus 65. And what I get is 330 meters. Now, sections A, B, and B, C are stone walls. A farmer wishes to put fencing around the rest of the field. The field costs 62 or 50 cents per five meters. Find the cost of the fencing. So what we can do is, it's in units of five meters, okay? So the money, each unit of five meter, costs me 62 euro 50 cents, okay? So we got, is basically how much fence we need, okay? Now what we need is, there's two parts that are walls, and the two parts that are walls are the uh, the two parts that are walls are A, B, and B, C. So A, B, and B, C. So A, B is 45, B, C is 35. So 45 plus 35 is 80 meters. 80 meters is wall. The rest of it is fence. So what we can do is we can say 330 meters minus 80 meters and what that's going to get me is 250 meters. Okay, so I have 250 meters of fence, fencing, okay? So we can see that it'd be the 65 plus the 55 plus the 110 plus the 20. And that's going to give us 250 meters worth of fence. Okay, so that's all fence. Now, what I have to figure out next is 250 meters, how many five meters will fit into 250? So how many units of fence do we need? So we need 50, 250 divided by five is 50 units of fencing. Okay, now we have to figure out how, many 50, how much 50 units of fencing costs. Each bit of fencing costs 62 euro 50 cents. So multiply 50 by 62.5. And you get 3,125 euro. Okay, next part. The average weekly earnings for people working for the manufacturing industry in 1998 to 2006 are given in the table below. The earnings are guaranteed near euro. So what we can see is that in 1998 it's uh, 429 euro, and every year. The workers in the manufacturing industry, they seem to be getting 
uh, more and more money. Both male and females seem to be increasing the amount of money they're making. Okay, so you can see that the average, the average amount of money is going up all the time for men and female, and all persons is thirty seven point five uh, three hundred seventy five, and we can see that the average for all the people is also going up. Now, what question question A wants us to do is it wants us to find the difference between male earnings and female earnings in the years nineteen ninety eight and two thousand six. So male earnings is 429, female earnings is 285. Take them away from each other, and the distance is going to be 144, or the difference is going to be 144 euro. Now in 2006, the males earned 624 euro, the females earned 541. You know, take these away from each other. And what you get is 173 euro. Okay. Now what we can see is that there's a bigger difference in earnings between males and females in 19 uh, in 2006 than there is in 1998. So males are making even greater amounts of money these days. Write down the average female earnings as a percentage of male earnings for each of the years 1998 and 2006. Give the answers correct to two significant figures. Okay. Okay. So let's go on. Nineteen ninety-eight. The female earnings is two hundred and eighty-five euro divided by the male earnings of four hundred and twenty-nine euro, and we're going to multiply that by a hundred over one. And what we're going to get is two eighty-five divided by four twenty-nine multiplied by a hundred, and we're going to get sixty-six. Point four three. Now the problem with this at the moment is it has four significant numbers, so we had to get rid of two of them. So the answer is going to be sixty six percent. That is two significant numbers. Okay. On the other one, two thousand six, it's going to be uh, four hundred and fifty one divided by six hundred and twenty four multiplied by a hundred over one. Now what we're going to get is seventy two point two seven five six. Now as you can see, this one actually has six significant numbers. We need only two, so we want the seventy two percent. Okay. Now, next part. From your answers to A and B above, would you say that these average wages have become more equal or less equal over nine years? Uh, less equal. And reason, women, on average, oh sorry, excuse me, don't know what I'm thinking here, okay, uh, it's actually 66% in 1998, but now it's 72%, uh, so uh, it's more equal, because Women, women are making a higher percentage of the male wage. Okay. The average weekly earnings for all parties in 1998 is 370, 375 euro. It is not the average of 429 and 285. Explain what this might be the case. Uh, basically, if if the manufacturing industry was 50% female and 50% male, what we could do is we could add basically the two numbers together. We could add 429 plus 2A5 and divide by 2. And we could get the average of basically, we could get the average wage that way. And it'd be 357 euro. But uh, it's not the average. This is not the average of 429, 285. Explain what might, this might be the case. 
basically uh, there are not equal amounts of men and women working in the manufacturing industry. Okay, that's your reason why. Now, question five. Tom's third year physical educa education class did a fitness test. The number of sit-ups that each student did in one minute is recorded below. Represent this data on a stem and leaf diagram. Okay, so how many 20s do we have? Let's take down all our 20s. 27 and 29. We also have no other 20s here, just 27 and 29. So let's do 7 and 9. That's 27 and 29. Please make sure there's a key here. Now we're on the 30s. We have 36. We have 37. We have 33. We have 38. We have another 37. And that's it. So we need to do it this way. 3, 6, 2 37s, and 1 38. Okay. Now we're on the 40s. And what we should have here, we'll just count them out. 48. 46. 45. 49. Another 45, a 40, a 44, a 47, another 45, and a 41. So let's see what happens here. We got 0, 1, 4, 3 45s. A 46, a 47, a 48, a 49. Okay, next one. We're doing our 50s now. So what we have is a 59, a 53, we have 52, we have a 51. And that's just a four of them there, so it's going to be 1, 2, 3, and 9. Finally, we just have, now, I think I left out a 51 by the looks of it, so there's a 60 here, and I have one left, a 51, so there's two 51s, so by doing this method, I can find out if I made an error or not, okay, so I can just move that there, and now add in another 51 here, so make sure you do it in pencil, now guys, what we need to do is, we need to count how many people we had in total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 by 2 is 24. There's 24 students in total. Let's count that we included everybody here. The first one has two people in it. The second one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five people in it. The third one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 people in it. The fourth one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The fifth one in the 60s has one. Let's add all these together and make sure that we have everybody counted. Now I have 2 plus 5 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. This only adds up to 23. I'm missing something. And what I think I'm missing here, if I can see it right at the top, I think I'm missing another 52. I'm missing 52 here. That's the one I'm missing. So always be aware that like you're going to be missing out on numbers if you aren't careful. So that's going to be a 2. That's going to be a 3. And that's going to be a 9. This brings this total up to 6. And now we have 24 people. So we, haven't, we, we have everybody included now. Okay. So just be aware of how to do this and how to spot the errors. Okay. How many students in the class? 24 in total. What is the range? of the sit-ups in the class. The word range means the top value minus the lowest value. 
okay or the largest minus the so what's going to be is basically 60 minus 27 and that's going to get you 33 what is the mode of the data the mode of the data is the most common answer okay so most common so let's look at what the most common is I think it's going to be 45 45 has just three 45s in this and 45 therefore is the most common number just two 52s two 51s two 37s but there's only three there's three 45s find the mean of the data correct to one decimal place now what the mean of the data means is that we got to add up all the data together and divide by 24 okay so divide all the data by 24 now to make this easier what we could do is just add up each column individually okay so it might make it a bit more uh, a bit easier okay so the first one is going to be 27 plus 29 so we can just say 27 plus 29 is 56 so you can just get a like a loose page okay and just go okay this one here adds up to 56 the next one add is 33 plus 36 plus 37 plus 37 plus 38 that's going to be 181 the next total is going to be 40 plus 41 plus 44 plus 45 plus 45 plus 45 plus 46 plus 47 plus 48 plus 49 and what that will get you is 450 okay so this is the total of each column the last total is 60 because there's only one of them and then finally what we're going to have next is 251 51 plus 51 plus 52 plus 52 plus 53 plus 59 and the total of all them is going to be 318 now also what we got to do next is we got this is the total of all our sit-ups so to get the average sit-ups we need the total sit-ups divided by the number of students okay excuse me so just gotta copy this for a minute might just drag it down actually yeah I'll just drag it down the bottom here and here we go drag down the bottom okay now so the main means the average okay and the average would be total sit-ups all the sit-ups divided by total students okay and we know the total students is 24 and now we just got to add all these together to get the total uh, sit up so it's going to be 56 plus 181 plus 450 plus 318 plus 60 and that's going to be 1065 so when you add them all together you get 1065 divide this 1065 by 24 and what you're going to get is 44 the average is going to be 44.375 sit-ups correct to one decimal place round that up to 44.400 because 375 rounds up to 400 get away get rid of your two zeros and you get 44.4 tom did 48 sit-ups in his test how does this compare to the rest of the class so let's see where tom came with 48 sit-ups okay so 48 sit-ups this is the location of Tom 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 people did better than Tom or 8 people had more sit-ups uh, sorry 8 people did more sit-ups did more sit-ups and one two three four five six seven eight ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen fifteen people did less sit-ups okay 
Okay, so now Tom knows that he's better than the halfway mark anyway. Four shapes are shown in the following parallelogram. And what we're asked to do is we want to find out do the diagonals bisect each other. Now what diagonals are is basically if I link here to here, this is what a diagonal is, okay? So I'm just going to draw a couple of diagonals on all of them. So, and what the question is asking is, do the diagonals bisect each other? Bisect means, does it cut it in half? So does this here, this little green dot, does that cut the lines in half? And you can see it cuts the parallelogram in half, because this distance is the same as this one, this one's the same as this one. In the squares, you can see that basically all the lengths are the same length, so it does cut it in half, so all of them are the same length. In the rectangle, it's the same deal, it cuts them all in half. And in the rhombus, it cuts these two are the same length, and these two are the same length. Okay, now, the diagonals are equal in length, that's something we got to look at, alright, as well. We'll do that now while we're here, because we have the diagonals already drawn. Are the diagonals in the parallelogram equal length? No, they're not. Okay, so diagonals in the parallelogram are not equal length. Equal in length. Diagonals in the square are equal in length. The diagonals in the rectangle, all the way across, they look equal in length, so they are. And finally, the diagonals in the rhombus. Now, rhombus basically means all the lengths are the same, but the diagonals aren't the same. We can see by eyesight that the diagonals aren't the same. So in the rhombus, no, the diagonals aren't the same. Now that we've done that, we can now uh, we can now get rid of these uh, diagonals. Okay, so we can move on to the next part of these questions. Okay. Opposite sides are equal in length. This side equals this side. This side equals this side. Yes. Opposite sides are equal in length. In the square, they're all equal, but the opposite sides are equal. In the rectangle, the opposite sides are equal in length. So they are. And in the rhombus, all the sides are the same length, and the opposite ones are equal in length. Okay. All sides, opposite sides are equal in length in each and every one of them they are. Now, all sides are equal in length. In the parallelogram, no. In the square, they are. In the rectangle, they definitely aren't. And in the rhombus, they are. Finally, opposite sides are parallel. Now, what parallel means is that they have the same slope, okay? So, if they're parallel, they have the same slope. So, in the parallelogram, the opposite sides go in the same direction. In the square, the opposite sides seem to be going in the same direction. Then we check the other sides. These two are going the same direction. These two go in the same direction. These two go in the same direction. And these two go in the same direction. Opposite sides are parallel in all cases. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now, the size of an A4 page is 210 millimeters by 297. Okay. So what we have here is a diagram of the page. Okay? This here is going to be 210 millimeters and this one here is going to be 297 millimeters. Describe how you'd calculate the length of the longest line you could draw on the A4 page. Now, if you imagine the longest line you can draw on the A4 page, you could try going straight up. You get 297, you could go straight across, that won't do. You could go slightly diagonal, which is better, but longer. But the best answer would be going from corner, one diagonal, to the other diagonal. This gives us the answer for the longest line. Okay? So, what we're going to have here now, is we're going to have this diagonal here. And what we're going to end up with is a right angle triangle. And to get the length of this, we're going to have to use a method, okay? So the method we're going to use is use Pythagoras' theorem. Use Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem is getting the hypotenuse of this triangle, because it's a right-angled triangle, to 
get the length of the longest line. that can be drawn. Now, calculate the, uh, calculate the length of the longest line correct to the nearest centimeter squared, right? So we're going to say is for, for Pythagoras' theorem, it reads a squared equals b squared plus c squared in your notes. And in the tables in the exam, what you're going to have to remember is that basically for this triangle here, it will always tell you that A is the longest side and B is the two other sides, okay? A is basically the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. So the longest one in this triangle is X. So X squared equals, and the other two can be 210 squared plus 297 squared. Enter this into your calculator. 210 squared plus 297 squared and what we're going to get is x squared equals x squared equals the and what's going to happen next is we need to square root it because we need to figure out what number what this means is what number multiplied by itself gives you 132309 so to figure this out to get rid of the x squared we need to use the square root sign so the square goes over to your side, and a square root sign will appear. And this is a maths button that m finds out this number for you. And the answer is going to be 363.74 millimeters. Reread the question. It wants to correct the nearest millimeter. Round upwards to 364 millimeters. Okay. The next question, all right? Mary has a bag of marbles. The number of marbles of each color are shown in the box. Seven yellow, three green, four red, two black. Count how many marbles there is in total. That's 16 marbles, because you just add them all together. Okay, so we have 16 marbles here. Mary takes a marble from the bag at random. Complete the sentence that will, complete the sentence below. The probability of Mary will take a something marble from the bag is a quarter. Now remember, a quarter is 4 in 16, right? So 4 marbles in 16, that's the red marbles, okay? So the red marbles. Now to calculate, basically, the, uh, the probability of getting each one, probability of yellow is 7 out of 16, probability of, of red is 3 in 16, probability of red is 4 in 16, but 4 and 16 is also a quarter, and the probability of black is 2 and 16, and 2 and 16 is an 8. Okay, so just remember just to put them into the lowest fractions you can. Now we know what the probability of each one is. The probability of taking a red marble is greater than the probability of taking a yellow marble. Is this statement correct? Yellow marble is 7 and 16, red marble is 4 and 16. Uh, no, because the probability of taking a yellow marble is 7 and 16. This is greater than, this is greater than one quarter, right? This is greater than 4 and 16. A better answer, probably making that a bit too complicated right now. The quick answer is there are more yellow marbles in the bag. So more yellow marbles in the bag. Okay. Mary found five more black marbles and added them to the bag. Fill in the number of marbles of each color after she had done this, okay? So, what happened to Mary here? 
was there's going to be seven yellow marbles. There's still seven yellow. There's still three green. And there's still four red. However, we now have five more black marbles. So the black marbles now goes up to seven. Okay? We had 16 marbles. Now we have five extra. And that's going to give us 21 marbles in total. Okay? Mary takes a, uh, a marble from the bag at random. What's the probability she'll take a black marble from the bag? It's going to be 7 out of 21. And 7 out of 21 is a third when you put it into the calculator. Okay. Now, doing question 3, question 5, question 4. Now we're on question 7. Let A be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 25. Write out the elements of A that are divisible by 2, but not divisible by 3. Okay, so let's write down everything that's divisible by 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, uh, 14, 16, 18, 21, 24. Let's put in all the stuff that's divisible by 3. 3, 6, 9, 12, 18, 21, 24. Let's eliminate these numbers from the original list. Oh, sorry. Divisible by 2. I lost my train of thought there for a minute. It was 18, 20, 22, and 24. So let's see what numbers we can get rid of here. 24 and 24. 18, 18. There's also uh, 15 in here that I forgot about, but 15 is not on the other list. 12 and 12. 6 and 6. Okay. So all that we need to do now is we can just rub out this list for a second. And then we answer. And please make sure when you're doing these questions, you let them know it is the answer. Answer is going to be 2, 4, 8, 10, 14, 16, 20, and 22. Okay. What's the probability that a number is chosen at random from the set A is divisible by 2, but not divisible by 3? Let's see how many. There's 24 numbers in total. So... Oh, sorry, 1 to 25 is 25 numbers in total. So there's 25 numbers in total. Let's count how many numbers we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 out of 25. Okay. Now. Okay, so next one. Una rolls a die and flips a coin. Give one, one of the possible outcomes is one, the number 1 and a head. Write down all 11 possibilities, all the remaining 11 possibilities of the outcomes below. Remember, when you roll a dice, there's six outcomes. When you flip a coin, there's two. Two by six is 12 outcomes. Okay, so let's see what happens here. We can go two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, six and a head we can go uh, one and a tail two and a tail three and a tail four and a tail five and a tail six and a tail how many outcomes consist of an odd number and a tail let's count one, two, three. Three outcomes consist of an odd number and a tail. Three outcomes, okay? What would the probability of finding that an outcome would contain a prime number? Prime numbers are two, three, five. Six is not a prime number. Prime numbers are numbers that can only be made in the multiplication table by multiplying themselves by one. 6 is not a prime number because we can make it by multiplying 3 by 2. In the same way, 4 isn't a prime number because we can make it by 2 by 2. And 1 just simply doesn't count as a prime number anymore. Okay? So let's do our counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
So six out of the twelve outcomes contain a prime number, and that's going to get me roughly a half. Okay. Okay, so that's the half there. Now we're on to the next one. Now the diagonals bisect each other equal in length. Now I've already done the two of these, I believe, earlier today. Just gonna have a quick check. Yeah, 